These instructions will guide you through the removal of the blower motor in the 1995 Volvo 850. I'm sure these instructions are the same on all the Volvo 850s, uh, maybe the S and V70s, not 100% sure. I took my blower motor out because it was squealing a little. When I purchased it, uh, my first 850 about two and a half years ago, the blower motor and it was squeaking. A couple months later, I, it didn't want to turn at all, so I took it out, lubed it, and it worked uh, for a few years. It is actually still working when I sold the car. The reason the motor was squeaking is because the bearings in it needed to be lubed. They start squeaking because they're gone or have gone dry. Uh, failure is soon to follow, but it can be avoided or at least delayed if you lube the motor. The motor costs about 170 bucks, so I, I think it's worth the hour it takes to take the motor out and lube it. When I took the motor out, I also removed the cage because it's almost impossible to lube it with the end of the cage on, uh, the, the fan part that is. Uh, another thing, the glove box screws will likely be damaged by removing the screws and the glove box from the dash. Uh, that glove box is real brittle, so when you put that back together, don't tighten those screws down too tight or you'll crack them and and just bore holes in the screw holes. So if you notice pieces of the glove box stuck to the dash, just leave them there. It may reduce damage to the glove box when you put it all back together. The tools needed uh, that I did the job with, I used the white lithium grease, a can of it, a screwdriver, 13 millimeter socket, uh, the socket driver adapter, the extra small screwdriver, Something to support the cage for removal. I used a house dryer vent tube adapter. Uh, some use tuba force. I had a hammer, a T25 torque bit, T15 torque bit, a quarter inch socket driver, a short extension, and a Phillips screwdriver or punch to help get that cage off of the front of that motor. Uh, first thing you want to do is empty out the glove box. Take the extra small screwdriver and release the hinges on the glove box door. You have to slide that thing down in the in that little hole on the edges and then pry a little bit as you pull up on the hinges. Uh, be careful when you get those hinges out. I normally put like a... a a bread tie bag on there so that they don't fall into the dash and disappear on you and they'll almost release automatically when you put that screwdriver down in there remove the screws that hold the glove, glove box in there are six of them and they're t25 screws remove the glove box it'll just pull out i usually use both hands you will have to work the top center of it around the glove box door latch Remove the lower dash pad panel. It has three T25 screws in. Takes the screws out and work it down and out. When you put that back in, it has some plastic guides in the back that the back end of it uh, slides up in. Uh, and they'll slide out of it when you go to pull that out. You will need to remove the knee bolster if that is still in. It's supposed to have four 13 millimeter nuts in the slot on either end mine had only two in it once you get the nuts off you will have to work it down a little and to the left a little then out it's a little bit hard to get out because the metal pieces of that booster grabs a hold to the threads of the studs but it will come out just work on it now you want to unplug the wires from the motor then uh, one in the center pointing away from the motor it has tabs on the left side of it remove the other connectors from the motor they slide off the motor together slide them to the right towards the three o'clock position you won't have to unplug them just get them out of the motor housing so you can work the motor out of the hole that's left for you to get the motor out. Slide the wires that go over the top of the motor off. Just pull them and they will come off the motor housing. 
Then you want to remove the four screws that hold the motor in. They are T25 screws. One at 11 o'clock, one at 2 o'clock, one at 3 o'clock, and the last one at the 7 o'clock position. The one at the 2 and 3 o'clock had to be removed with the small ratchet adapter. Once you have the screws out, you will be able to work the motor out and down. Okay, so the motor's out, and this is what I did to uh, gain access to the rest of the motor to lube it. Once you have the motor out, there's a screw and a rubber gasket in the back of the housing. Remove the one screw with the T15 uh, bit. Take off the plug adapter from the housing. It has two tabs where it meets the most center part. Pull up on those tabs and work the connector off. Then you want to hold the motor housing between your feet and pull the fan cage. It will slide the motor out of the housing. You want to make a note here. Once you have the motor out of the housing, it is hard to lubricate uh, the motor ends with the cage still attached to the shaft. So I took the cage off the motor shaft. Find something to support the cage so the motor will hang between it and tap the shaft through the middle until it is flush with the cage. Once the shaft is flush, use a Phillips screwdriver or a punch to drive it the rest of the way out. Warning, do not bang on the cage too hard. You'll probably break it. Now, you want to make a note of how far the shaft extends out both ends of the motor and the cage so you can put it back together properly. Alright, now that I have the motor apart from everything, I just uh, shake up the can of grease real good, lube both ends, make sure you lube the ends good, but don't get the lube inside the electrical part of the motor. It may stop the motor from working. When you're done, install the cage on the shaft. I rested the motor side of the shaft on the ground when, tatching, when tapping the cage back on to avoid damaging the motor. When you put the motor back in the housing, make sure you line up the electrical connections, connectors in the housing so it goes into the housing properly and the plug will plug back in. Hope these instructions were helpful.